everyone and welcome to Journey with the Kellers. My name is Amanda Keller and today we are back in the Keller kitchen. So today I wanted to start something new. It'll still involve cooking, but I'm actually going to make this a different playlist on the YouTube channel just because I may not be doing this every once in a while from this book. I'll hopefully be doing it once a week um, and I'll hopefully work up into making my own. So what we are going to be working on today is gingerbread and we're going to be using the magic of gingerbread book okay so this book here basically um eventually well not even eventually you can do a couple of smaller projects and then you work your way into um doing actually gingerbread houses which is something i've always wanted to do i would eventually like to learn to make my own templates and then make my own gingerbread houses but i'm having a hard time finding some place where you can really learn how to do a template. I am not like an architectural computer savvy type of person, so I can't do it that way. And I could probably hand draw it, although I'm not sure about doing measurements. So that's something I'm still looking into. So if you know any place to learn templates, or if you have any idea of a basic way to draw uh, templates, please let me know. Okay, so this first uh, recipe that we're gonna be making is called cookie puzzles, which is basically little gingerbread cookie puzzles that you can take apart and put together before you eat them. So it sounds really cute. So these would make a really great gift, okay? Or even a little stocking stuffer or whatever, you know, okay. So a few things that you are going to need, generally the ingredients are basic. So for the ingredients wise, you don't really need a whole lot. But for tool wise, you might need a little bit of extra things. And I will go through each step. Right now we're gonna be making the gingerbread. So the really the only things I can think of besides the basic baking ingredients is you will need a rolling pin and you will, you don't have to, but if you can get them or if you have them, you're gonna need one eighth inch spacers on them, which is what these little um, orange things are. Uh, this basically keeps you from rolling it less than one eighth of an inch. It helps you to know where one eighth of an inch is. You can also eyeball it if you're good at that. I'm just not very good at it. So I decided to get these little things. What am I rolling in? You are gonna need some parchment paper when it comes to rolling them out. And then of course some baking sheets to put them on, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees, which I have already done, okay? So the next thing you'll wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to sift your dry ingredients all together. So that's gonna be three cups of flour. Also, so that you know, it was recommended that you use a scale. So I will give it in grams and ounces. I'm just not doing a scale this morning. I just didn't, I don't, didn't feel like getting the scale out. So I am gonna use the measurements, but I will give you to it in grams and ounces as well. So if you want to use the scale, you can. So it's three cups of all purpose flour or 480 grams or 17 ounces, okay? So that's one cup, two cups, and three cups of flour. Is that gonna fit? Woo, barely, okay? Oh, I don't know why I set that for the measuring cup over there. I need to set this over there. Okay, you're also gonna put into this four teaspoons of ground ginger. And then you're also gonna need one teaspoon of salt. Okay, one teaspoon of salt. And one, a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Sometimes the light is glaring off of these cookbooks, just right, and I can't see what that says. I'm gonna really squint at it. Could be my eyes too, who knows. Usually it's the light, I think. I think. I keep saying it every time I have to use this baking soda. It's too far down in there. And I need to just buy a new one. But 
I don't want to waste. Okay, so half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, let me make sure that's all the dry ingredients that go in. Yes, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and sift this in. Ooh, I can smell that ginger, guys. Almost there. Got it, okay. Set that off to the side, and then we're just gonna set this up here, okay? So, for the next part, you are just going to need um, either a stand mixer or a really, uh, what's it called, like a heavy, um, or a sturdy hand mixer is what it's saying. So if you have a really good hand mixer, you can use that as well, but I'm gonna be using the stand mixer. So what you're gonna need now is you're gonna need one cup of shortening. I have two things of shortening because my one's about to run out, so. Oh, and you do need a paddle attachment on your stand mixer as well. So part of the reason why I have never done these was, well, when I was a kid, um, we, we didn't really do these in my family, but my older sister used to get gingerbread houses um, mailed to her from her aunt that lived in Florida. Now, um, it wasn't my aunt. My sister is my half-sister, even though I don't even think I knew that until I was like 10 years old or something. But um, yeah, so she used to get these gingerbread houses that her aunt would make and mail to her. And I always thought they were so cool. Um, but my mom isn't doesn't really like baking. So, you know, doing something like a gingerbread house just wasn't something she was going to do. Now, when I got older, I was really leery about making them because I'd always heard about how hard they are to make and everything else. So I bought some of those kits. You know, you've seen the kits. Um, out there that you can just buy and then they come all baked and ready to go and I thought I'll just try this kit and maybe if I can do the kit I'll do the gingerbread house well the kits ended up being a disaster and it just didn't work and then I was like mm, okay maybe not but now I'm kind of like okay it's time it's time to try it you've always wanted to try it so let's try it if I mess it up real bad I mess it up real bad okay so we've got one cup of shortening in there and then we've also going to put in some sugar. So you need one cup of sugar, which I'm gonna get a different cup now because that one's wasted. There we go. Okay, so one cup of sugar. All right. And then you're gonna beat these together um, until light and fluffy, okay? Oh, I forgot to plug in my machine, duh. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this on low, just so you know, just because I don't want sugar to go flying everywhere. And then I'll turn it up a little bit and beat it until it's light and fluffy. So I'll be back as soon as that's done. Be back in just a okay, minute. you guys. So um, don't forget to scrape down your bowl while you're mixing this. And of course it is nice and light and fluffy looking here, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and add your molasses to this now. Get that off of there. So what you're gonna need is, how much molasses here? Um, a half a cup of molasses. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, so for the shortening, it was one cup. It was also 200 grams or seven ounces. For the granulated sugar, it was also one cup, but it was 200 grams or seven ounces. Um, for the molasses, you're gonna do a half a cup or 60 grams or 5.5 ounces if you're using a scale, okay? Now for the ground ground ginger, the salt, and the baking soda, this is just teaspoons. You don't you don't need to use a scale for that. Okay. All right. So half a cup of molasses, or like I said, uh, 160 grams or 5.5 ounces. Now, supposedly this gingerbread recipe does not have to be refrigerated, which is actually fairly rare. Most of the gingerbread recipes, once you make them, it needs to be refrigerated for so long to harden up. Also, she says that this one is really edible. So I've never made it, so I have no idea. But I guess a lot of them, you know, they try to make them 
um, so that they'll last a long time and that can make them so they're, they don't taste so good, I guess. I haven't had uh, like a real gingerbread house in quite a while. So I don't even remember if I've ever tasted the gingerbread. I know I ate the candy off of them, but I don't know if I've ever taken the cookie off and ate it. Not really sure. Okay, so then we got that in and then you're gonna need uh, two tablespoons of water. I could get my faucet to come on. There we go. Okay, so here's one tablespoon and two tablespoons. Okay, so now you're gonna go ahead and beat that again until it's nice and incorporated. Um, once it's looking like it's all mixed up together, you're gonna scrape down the side of the bowl and then beat it again for another 30 seconds, okay? So I'll be right back as soon as that's okay, done. Okay, you guys, so my uh, ingredients are nice and mixed up here. So now you're, I'm gonna turn the mixer down to low and it says to add the flour mixture that you sifted earlier all at one time. So we're just gonna, and I turned it down to low because of course you don't want a huge flour mess either going everywhere. Oops. Ah! I just turned it up a little bit. I hit the knob. There we go. Make sure this is locked down. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, and so now you're going to mix that up. Um, it just says mix it up. I'm going to stop it here in just a minute and scrape down the side as well. I am a little worried about how my mixer is going to handle this. I've, I don't think I've ever made cookie dough in here. Maybe, and I just don't remember it. Okay, looks like we got some up here too, so we'll scrape that down a little bit too. And make sure you get the tops of your paddle because it seems to always get stuff on it. Okay. So now that we got that all done, let's turn her back on here. Turn her up a little bit. Okay. Okay, so it basically just says to mix it until your dry ingredients are incorporated or mixed in there, which ours are. And it can be a crumbly dough, okay? So it's supposed to be kind of crumbly, so that's fine. All right, so we're gonna take this off of here, maybe. Oh, this guy can't do it from that side, I don't know. Okay, and I'm gonna move the mixer over here and out of the way. All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically kind of bring this together as a ball of dough. And I think I'm also gonna kind of wipe this down a little bit just because I need some workspace for the parchment paper and stuff. I don't want all this stuff getting all over it. So let's wipe this down real fast here. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and get a piece of parchment paper ready. We've got that, good. So form your dough into a ball. Should form pretty easily, which it looks like it is, which is good. Oops. So we got a nice little ball now. That was pretty easy. Look at that. And you're going to set that on your parchment paper. Okay, we're going to move this out of the way. I'm going to wash my hands real quick because they got kind of greasy feeling gingerbread dough all over them. So now what you're gonna do, let's move this out of the way and this out of the way. I'm sure we've got plenty of room here. I don't think I'll actually need that much, but at least it'll be out of the way. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you're gonna need a second piece of parchment paper. I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna flatten this down a little bit. Bad thing is, is my parchment paper is not very big. Okay, I do have the roll kind. I guess I could have used that. I just didn't think about it. All right, so you're gonna put another piece of parchment paper over top, okay? 
okay? Now, if it does go over the parchment paper, that's fine. Just kind of peel it off and set it to the side because you're only going to need, um, basically, your, your things that you're making are only going to be big enough to fit on a sheet pan. So whatever is extra left over, you're going to roll that out and then, you know, you, you can put it, form another little ball because you can roll it out again, okay? All right, so we're just going to try to roll this out to one eighth of an inch. Maybe I should have flattened it a little bit more. It's not one thing to roll. It's the only thing I don't like about using parchment paper is that it tends to slide everywhere, as you can tell. Okay. I think this is gonna be a pretty big, maybe I should have cut it in half. That might have been better and rolled it a half at a time. Maybe. Rolling and me are not always buddies. <laughs> I do not have a good rolling time, I guess you could say. Especially when I have to use two pieces of parchment paper. But it will save you from having a mess. And it will make it easier to transfer this onto a pan as well. So I'm not sure how it's going to get to 1 8 when it's bigger. So we're going to take some of this off. I'm going to set this to the side because it's wider than the rolling pin now, which is making it so that it's rolling it to a 1 8 of an inch of the dough. Okay, so we'll set that to the side. Keep going here. Sliding off the table. Okay, again, we're coming off the paper, so we're just gonna set that to the side here. Okay. I think if you're gonna use I think maybe you should roll out a half of the ball at a time in order to do this. Um, I think that way it would be easier because this is like too much dough to try to keep it within your parchment paper limits, I guess you would say. And this is, you know, the size of a sheet pan, so I don't want to go over this. And a big lump here. So yeah, definitely next time I'm gonna try only doing like a half of a ball of dough for rolling out at a time. Okay, you guys, so I'm gonna do that. I'm actually going to go ahead and kind of cut this in half. Just leave a big lump over here. And then I'm gonna, you know, to see, I mean, it's getting in the way of the rolling pin thing. So, I mean, how are you gonna know if you take it down to an eighth of an inch if the rolling pin can't reach the bottom or can't reach what your surface? We're just gonna trim this up a little bit. Oops, <laughs> I got a big chunk underneath it here. Okay. There we go, let's try that. Seems much more workable now. Much better. Let's go this way a little bit. There we go. So definitely, I would start with like a half of the dough maybe even maybe even like a third of the dough to get it rolled out for your first one and then you know you can add the leftovers to the other thirds or whatever you are supposed to make i think it says four cookie puzzles with this okay so now we're to where the markers are look at that nice and rolling excellent okay let me get this off of the bottom here all right, you guys, so now 
we've got to make our templates and all of that. So I am going to draw out our templates. Now for the templates, there's no way really for me to give them to you. Um, this one though is just a rectangle, so I can measure it and tell you how big it is. Um, and then, you know, you could kind of draw it yourself. The other part of the template is just a cookie cutter. So this one is for a tree and a snowman. You could probably do whatever cookie cutter you want if you really want to, if you want to be creative on your own. I'm just going to show you what's in the book, okay? So let me go gather my stuff for cutting this all out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I thought I would bring you a little bit closer up so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Oops, there's a little crease there, that's okay. All right, so what we have is this little template here. This is just six inches long by five inches wide. It's just a little rectangle, okay? So you're going to set that on top. Don't press down too hard, but I do kind of like to have it stick just a little bit to the template, to the dough, but don't like push it down in, okay? All right, so now what you're gonna do, oops, let me get this dough out of the way because it's crinkling this up here. All right, so, and so, yeah, so you guys could make your own of this. I'm going to move this one up actually a little bit because it's getting down into that. There's like a little part where the roller kind of went weird. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to use the, the top of the knife, but not the point. If you use the point, it'll make it jagged. So you want to make sure that you're using part of the blade. And it's a good idea to go over on each of your corners so that they overlap, so that you can, um, you know, make sure you get really nice sharp corners. Okay, so we're just gonna cut this out. Oops, that one's a little bit off, but that's okay. Okay, and we're gonna cut this one out. Now, according to the directions, this is supposed to make about four cookies, but I think I'm, I can make more than that. I think there's enough dough, dough to make a, more than that. So I'm just going to keep making them until, you know, I run out of dough, okay? So once you get that done, go ahead and take your templates off. I can peel it off here without. Ah. There we go, okay. So take your templates off. Now you're going to use one Christmas tree and one snowman cookie cutter. Try to place them in about the center. So it looks center, I don't know if this one's over just a little bit too far. There we go. There we go, okay. Maybe, all right, go ahead and press down, okay? And then remove your cookie cutters. Okay, you are gonna remove all this excess dough around here off too, but we can do that in a little bit. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make the puzzle pieces. So for the Christmas tree, what you're gonna do, you can just cut them any, any way you want, okay? I'm gonna just uh, show you the ones I'm gonna do and kind of I'm kind of doing it kind of close to how it looks in the book, but you, got, you can do your puzzle pieces however you want. You don't have to follow this. So we're gonna do one here not to cut into my tree. It's probably cut away from the tree because I just cut into it a little bit. So probably a good idea to cut away from your cookie cut out there. So one there. And we're going to do one about here. Um, then one maybe here. Okay. Then one about here. Um, one about here, and then one about, uh, where's it at, here maybe? About here. Okay, so that's how they look in the book. I wish I wouldn't have cut that because I don't like that. There we go. Maybe we can kind of, there we go. Okay, now for the snowman one, it's a little bit different because you're going to be doing a sky and then snow. So you want a complete horizontal line. Let me get the picture up of the snowman so I can see him here. Okay, so you want one horizontal line that's basically all the way across, but you don't wanna cut across the snowman. So just try to get as close to even as you can, and that's gonna separate your sky from your snow, okay? So the other one's about right here. That looks good. Okay, and then you're still gonna make some more pieces down here. So let's put one here and one about here, okay? 
And then you need a few up here. So let's do one here. Like I said, it's up to you where you want to do them. You don't have to do it this precise way. You can do it any way you want. Oh, this way. I'm going to put one right down the middle here. And then one about here, it looks like. And then one about here. Okay, so then you're just going to remove all your excess dough. Okay, try to do this kind of quickly. You can tell I'm just using the tip of my knife, kind of pulling it away, following along the line of the cut. Oh, I guess that don't matter because that's all going to come off. Okay. Oops, not mean to do that. Okay. I got a weird crumb. Okay, then once you get this all done, um, all cleaned up, all you're gonna do is just transfer this onto a sheet pan. So you're just gonna slide it on there. Uh, be better probably if the sheet pan was a little bit lower. So if you're using a countertop, maybe put the sheet pan at the edge of the countertop so you can just slide it over. Okay, and you're gonna put this in the freezer for about 15 minutes, just enough to get them nice and chilled. And then that way you can move the pieces around a little bit easier without having to worry about them falling apart, okay? Once you've uh, fr frozen them for 15 minutes, you're gonna go ahead and take them out and then you're going to move your pieces around, okay? So you're going to separate out all your pieces. So you're gonna separate out all these little pieces around it and your tree and snowman itself. You want them to be about a half an inch apart, okay? So then you're going to stick them in the oven at 350 degrees and you're probably, so gingerbread is hard. They don't, you don't really have a time. You just have to keep an eye on it. So for something that's one to two inches, it, they it just take about one to, or nine to 13 minutes to cook. So I would say, you know, basically at nine minutes, start checking it. Um, it should be, you know, of course, a little bit brown. The edges should be more done than the inside. Um, it may get bubbles that should go away, um, but sometimes may not go all the way away. So it's just hard to see. I will get these cooked and try to give you guys more information after I cook them and see how they do. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and stick them in the freezer for 15 minutes and then I will be back um, after I cook them and show you guys um, how they came out and hopefully be able to give you a little bit more information about how long it took me to cook them. Of course, ovens do vary. Humidity does affect it. So it depends on what time of year you're making them um, and what your humidity is like in your area. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, but I'll try to uh, come back and then show you guys kind of what they look at. You can do things, you know, smaller items cook faster than bigger items and all that stuff. So I'll be back in a little bit uh, to show you guys these all cooked, and then we're going to move on to making the royal icing and uh, decorating these. All right, so we'll be back. Okay, you guys, so I just wanted to show you. So here is a set cooked at nine minutes. Now ignore these little curl parts over here. I actually put this one on a pan where the parchment paper curled up over the edge, so it curled the cookie. This is one cooked about three minutes longer than that. So you can see it's a little bit darker, but the edges are darker than the middle, which is the way it should be. So, and these are both considered just fine. Okay, so they are both, it doesn't, it's just on how dark you want them. You can have them lighter or darker, okay? So as long as the edges are darker, you're good. Now, just as a few tips, um, especially as we get into making houses, you don't necessarily have to worry about it for this, um, unless you're, you know, really run it to be, really nice. I got a little piece on top of this one. Um, but anyway, so let's say you notice like a jagged edge, like on this one, as soon as you, or like, let's say it looks like the edges aren't as, um, good as they were when you put them in the oven. Now the gingerbread should pretty much cook. It will rise a little bit and then come back down and the edges, you know, what you cut should stay the same, but just in case it doesn't, you could always take your template and put it back over the piece and then if there's any pieces that look like they have jagged, you could just trim them with your knife, okay? You have to do this as soon as you take it out of the oven on the cookie sheet, okay? 
Also, like let's say it's cooled off and you notice something is off, you can take like a lemon zester file and just file it down a little bit, okay? When it comes to gingerbread houses, it is going to be critical that the edges are straight and super, you know, like the edges are straight and the corners are super pointy, okay? So that's that. Also, let's say, so when gingerbread is in the oven, of course it rises a little bit and then comes back down as it bakes. So let's say you pull one out and like there's a little bump. This one looked like it had one and I missed it. Um, but say there's a little bubble. You can just take like the back of a spatula, a flat spatula and pat that down and make sure it goes back down and, and then it'll be fine. Do Of course, do that while it's hot, okay? All right, so that's basically it for cooking. Like I said, this one's at nine minutes. This one's at about 12 minutes. Um, so it just depends on how um, dark you want them to be. I'm not sure if you can tell exactly. They are darker, not super, super darker, but they are darker, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get set up to make the royal icing, and then uh, we'll be back, and uh, we'll make the royal icing and get these decorated. So we'll be back in a little bit. I did also forget to tell you, so once you've done anything that you need to do to them, um, you're supposed to put them on a flat as cooling rack as possible. You can see this one is dented in, so I'm gonna need to buy some more new cooling racks before I get to gingerbread houses. Um, they should be really flat so that the pieces don't bow. I did leave mine on the pans for just a little bit because they were really, really flimsy and I was afraid if I moved them, they would break. So I did just leave them on there just a little bit until I felt like I could, you know, have a solid piece that's not super frenzy right after being baked. And then I put them on the cooling racks to cool the rest of the way. So you can do that as well. It didn't hurt them. Okay, now I'll be back in a little bit to make hey, that. guys, so we're back. So now we're going to make the royal icing, okay? So uh, royal icing is pretty easy to make. The problem is with decorating anything like this, uh, you have to have different consistencies of royal icing, which can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, just so you know, okay? So basically what you're gonna need for this is you're gonna need a sifter. You can go ahead and just put it inside of your stand mixer bowl. It's best to make this with the stand mixer. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and put uh, four cups of icing sugar. If you want to do this scale, that would be 520 grams or 18 ounces. Okay, so we have one cup. Two cups. Three cups. Oh, my thing don't fall over here. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so it's already getting a little full, so I'm just gonna sift it just a little bit to bring it down so I can fit the fourth cup in here. Okay, there we go. And also, I'm calling this icing sugar because that's what it says in the book, but this is also Confectioner sugar or powdered sugar, whichever one you want to call it. Okay, so four cups there. There we go. Oh, I'm trying to stick it back in there. Okay, so to this, you're also going to add in three tablespoons of meringue powder. Okay, so we got one. Now I do know um, I've seen other recipes of royal icing where they don't they use something else besides meringue powder and right now I can't remember what that is uh, but there is something you can use instead I'll probably think of it later but um, anyways yeah so there is different versions of this all right so you're gonna go ahead and sift this on out my sifter does not like to sift powdered sugar at all. Ooh, not to mention, I feel like I'm in a <coughs> smoky room. <coughs> all right. I always kind of feel like the sifter kind of makes it 
like creates these balls. I don't know, I don't know why. Cause you know, normally powdered sugar doesn't have little hard balls in it, but when you sift it, you find these little hard balls that you gotta try to sift. And they don't like it at all. Okay, so got that done. All right, now you're gonna go ahead. Ooh, don't tip it. My goodness. You're gonna go ahead and stick that on your stand mixer with your paddle attachment, okay? Now to this, uh, let's see, you're gonna go ahead and add uh, eight tablespoons of water. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, okay? Now you can also, at this point, if you want to add one teaspoon of lemon juice, but that is optional, so I'm not going to do that. To start this out on low. Kind of get it mixed up a little. And then it says to get it up onto high. I just don't feel like I mean, I guess it's going in icing. It doesn't seem like eight tablespoons would be enough. Okay, you're going to get this eventually up to a high speed. But before I get it there, I am seeing some stuff on the side of the bowl. So we're going to go ahead and scrape that down. And then we'll get it up to a high speed. You're going to beat this on a high speed for about five minutes. You want it to have, is it soft peaks? Yes. So you want it to form some soft peaks. Okay. Get this kind of all scraped up. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this keep mixing. You are gonna need, once you get this all mixed up, you're gonna need um, basically like uh, four airtight bowls. Uh, they can be, they don't have to be super big. I have three here and then a fourth one here. And then you're gonna need another little airtight bowl for the one um, thing that uh, icing that you're going to dye because you're not going to dye very much of it. Okay, so I'll be back as soon as this thing forms some soft peaks. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, you guys. So I got our frosting all done. I went ahead and divided it out into four bowls. This bowl can wait for a little bit. Okay. So this one is going to stay white. So I'm just gonna set that one to the side and I'll show you guys what this looks like. But first, uh, I wanted to tell you all what you're gonna need. So first of all, you are gonna need a green, a black, a blue, and an orange um, gel icing, okay? These are the Wilton's um, little containers of icing. You're also gonna need some toothpicks um, to put that icing in here. Um, and then you're going to need some spoons, basically. I'm just going to use plastic spoons in order to mix your icing up. Now, if you were doing coloring like a whole bunch of icing at one time, you could use a mixer as well to do this. Okay, so we're going to set this little bowl to the side for a minute because we're going to need that in a little bit. Okay, so what you're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to keep the lids on them because they can't, they will kind of start to harden up really fast if you don't. So here's what it looks like. It's a nice fluffy icing. It doesn't really move or anything. So we're gonna paint, we need one of these to be green. Actually two of these to be green. So one is gonna be light green and one is gonna be dark green. So we're gonna start out, I'm gonna put like maybe a couple drips of the green in there with a toothpick. I'm gonna wipe the toothpick off on there. Okay, then you're going to mix that up. Now 
I shouldn't say one dark green and one light green. You want one green and one light green. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Make sure you get the, the icing all the way mixed up in there. And definitely make sure you get everything off the sides and the bottom. Okay. bit too pale maybe let's try just a little bit more green I'm gonna do too much more but a little bit more and maybe this can be the light green Now, do remember too, like your mixer bowl and all of that, after you get done using it to make the icing, you definitely probably want to have it soaking in water because, you know, you're probably not going to be able to go clean it up right away and, you know, it'll harden up and it gets harder to clean. So definitely I would fill it up with some water and let that in your paddle and anything else really that you're going to use uh, for it. To be in there okay so i'm going to use about that color for the green okay for the light green i mean okay throw these away i'm just going to make sure you put your lid on them while you're mixing the others okay now we're going to do the dark green which probably means we're going to need a lot more i'm actually going to kind of like dump this out because we need Quite a bit more of the green to make it darker. Okay. Oh, definitely darker. I think for this royal icing, I think that you can like either keep it at room temperature with a lid on it for the day, but I think you can also refrigerate it for like up to two weeks. Okay, so that's definitely a lot darker. I see some green over here though that's not mixed in. Let's make sure we get that mixed in. There we go. Okay, so there's that one. We got the darker green. All right, then you're going to need, oops, well, spilled it, a light blue. So we're going to take this one here and use the blue. We only need a light blue for this, so you're probably not going to need too much. Let's try that. light blue okay all right all right put that here with the lid on it okay so the last thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take your white here and all you're gonna do is take out like two tablespoons and put it in a smaller container okay Everything needs to be either airtight or like refrigerated, basically. Okay, so you put about two tablespoons of the white icing in this smaller container. Where's my, oh, put your lid back on that. Okay, this time you're gonna take your black. 
this is a very small amount of, of icing, so you're not gonna need too much of the black, I wouldn't think. Although, black can sometimes be hard to get to look black, and you do want it to look black, okay? Yep, now, now we got a gray, not a black. Looks like, looks like mush, pretty much. Okay, so let's put quite a bit more of black in just because we need it to be black, black. gray. Let's try a little bit more here. There we go. That's definitely starting to look black. I'm gonna make sure we get it all mixed in. Stripes. I think that looks black. I think that's black. Okay. So now that you got that done, same thing, you're going to tighten this up. Okay. There we go. All right, you guys, so the next thing that you are going to need is um, some piping bags. So you're going to need, it tells you four piping bags with couplers and the number one um, tip, but actually I think it takes five. Um, so I only have four number one tips. Um, and so I have this fifth bag for the black frosting without a tip on it for now. I'll just have to rinse a tip off to use that when we get to that point. Um, but in order, just grab a bag. If you have a coupler, you can go ahead and screw the bottom part off. Put that down in there. Put it down as far as you can um, into the bag. Then I usually just push it back just a tad bit. Maybe for the couplers, I only do maybe about half of my thumb, thumb width to push it back, okay? And then snip it right there at the end. Push it back down. Put your number one tip on and then screw the thing back on to hold the tip in place, okay? So that's what you're going to need for that. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and start getting these decorated. Whoops. So let me get my cookies over here and get you guys set up. We are going to start out with the trees. So you won't need the blue, the white, or the black for right now. You're just going to need the two greens, okay? So I'll be back in just a minute. I'll get you guys all set up so you can see what I'm doing. And we'll go from there and I'll get my uh, icing in my bags. Now, um, I'm going to do my, I fill my icing um, one at a time as I'm kneading them because, again, I don't want them to hard them up. But you're only using half of your icing because we are going to change the consistency in the other half after we do some outlines, okay? So, only put half of your icing in your bag as you need it. Um, and then, you know, you want to keep them nice and airtight as well so they don't harden up in the bag. So I'll be back in just a minute with my bags ready and my cookies sitting here so you guys can see them. Be back in there, you guys. So as you can see, we got our Christmas trees ready here. Now, as you, as I mentioned, this was for four um, uh, puzzles. So one, you know, for two of the Christmas tree and two of the snowmen. And I did a lot more than that, but I do have both of my, so here's my regular green and my light green in my piping bags. And what you're gonna do with the, the brighter green, and this is only half of the green that we made, okay? So it's not very much. But what you're gonna do is make sure you twist the top to keep it tight. And you're just gonna start by putting your tip on there. Come on, come out. And then you're gonna pull back and make a nice outline of your Christmas tree. 
Oops, I might have went a little bit too far down on that one. I'm not great at this. I am shaky. But you're going to outline all of your Christmas trees. Ooh, that went way over. In your regular green color, okay? Wow, I am not very good at this, you guys. But that's okay. But it pretty much, you're supposed to start out by touching it and then pull out and up. Oh, wow. And then your squeeze consists, you're supposed to squeeze it at a consistent enough rate, which I am not doing right now. That's okay. Okay. Cannot say that I am the best at this and that when I had the tip too close. Okay. So just try to do it the best you can. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And, you know, these are for home. I'm not that concerned about it. If I ever wanted to, like, sell these, that would be a different story. Oops, I'm going over again. But I do want them to hold the frosting that I'm going to be putting on. And I've got one more over here. So let me get that one done real quick. So the regular green is done. Now you're going to use the light green and I'm going to put that regular green back in the bowl so that we can use it later. Then you're going to do the same thing with the light green, but on all the other pieces. Okay. So you're just going to go and outline them all. Okay. All right, you guys. So while I am outlining these, I will come back after I get them all outlined. Yeah, I really need to practice on my squeezing technique there. But I'll come back after I get them all lined and show you guys how to make the icing a little more uh, floody so we can flood these. Wow, if they'll even hold the icing. And uh, so I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, you guys, so as you can see, I got all of my cookies nice and outlined. I got a little bit better as it went on, but man, my hand is hurting from doing all that squeezing. So let me move one of these out of the way here real quick. Just set it over here. And we're gonna go ahead and get our icing ready for flooding, okay? I did put whatever I had left in the bags back in their bowls, just so we would have a little bit more. And I'm gonna have a nice little spoon handy here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your icing that you made and you're gonna add one teaspoon. So I have a just a thing of water here one teaspoon of water to that at a time and mix it in each time, okay? And what you're trying to get is a very thin icing that you can uh, basically, you know, flood your cookie with, okay? So it is gonna take probably a few, but it does usually thin out pretty quick, okay? Now, if you uh, were to maybe thin it out too much, you could always add a little bit of powdered sugar, confectioner sugar, icing sugar, whatever you want to call it, um, back in to thicken it back up, okay? Now, you can use a spoon for this, um, especially if they're bigger pieces. If they're tiny pieces, you might want to use a piping um, bag and do it that way with a little tip on it. Um, I'm going to try it with just a spoon and see how it does. Okay, we're getting, this is getting nice and mixed up now. Let's see. Oh, it's looking pretty good, you guys. Looking pretty good. I think maybe just one more thing of water. Like I said, I can always thicken it back up if I need to. I don't think we'll need to, but... I want it to be pretty easy to put on there, especially since it's going on kind of smaller pieces. Okay, so make sure you get that all mixed in there. There we go, pretty good, okay? So now what you're gonna do, let me bring our other set back over here. There we go. 
So once you've got it to a good flooding consistency, you know, like I said, you can use a piping um, thing if you feel, you know, that you could do that better, but you're just gonna put this on here and then kind of just push it into your little corners and stuff using your spoon as best as you can. It's probably better to do the bigger areas first to thin it out and then move it into the crevices, okay? And as you can see, you don't need very much. So once you get it nice and in there, then these, okay, so once you do all this and you're going to do your, all your trees in this, in the, the regular green color, so that looks pretty good. Okay, so you're going to do all your trees in the regular green color, then you're going to go back and thin out your lighter green color and do all of your other pieces, okay? And then you're going to let those sit for an hour. Um, and then we'll come back after I get all these filled in I, and I'm letting them sit. I will come back and show you how to do the snowman. And then uh, after that, you're going to have to let them sit for an hour before we do the rest of the decorations. Okay, so I'll be back in just a minute to show you guys the snowman. Okay, you guys. So here is the, hold on, let me straighten you guys out. Just There we go. Um, here is the snowman. So what you want to make sure is that you have your bottom part where you did the horizontal lines um, separated from the top part so that you know which one is which. Sorry about my son screaming there. Um, and then what you're going to do is the same thing you did before. So your top pieces, you're going to outline in your blue. Your bottom pieces, you're going to outline in your white. Um, my snowman is kind of running a little bit here, but that's okay. You're going to do the hat of the snowman outlined in black, and then the rest of the snowman outlined in white, okay? And then you're going to flood them the same way we did with the tree, okay? So just make your um, icing a little bit of a thinner consistency, and then just flood them in. I did do the black first, and then went and did the blue um, just to try to kind of give the black a little bit more time to set up before I did the white because I didn't want that happening, but it happened anyway. So no big deal. Not on all of them. Some of them it did just fine. Some of them I overran the white a little bit and so the black mixed in with it because it wasn't quite dry. All right, you guys. So now we're going to finish decorating these. I think the trees have set for an hour. You need to let them sit for about an hour after you finish flooding them. Um, and then I think our trees are just about there. So I'm going to get everything ready to decorate the trees and I'll come back and show you that. Okay. So be right. Back. Okay. You guys. So now for the, uh, Christmas trees, basically all you're going to do is decorate them real quick. So you're going to take your light green frosting, which I think this might be, yeah, that's light green. And you're just going to make a little like a design around the front here. Okay. And then you're going to just make a zigzag line as well. Okay, so zigzag, 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 zigzag. Okay, now you're going to take some green, red, um, it says light green, red, and blue um, jelly beans cut in half. And you're going to put those around on there as little ornaments. Okay. Kind of touch them in there. And there you go, you guys. That's it. That's the tree. Oh, wait a minute. One, maybe one more. Let's see. What do we have? Oh, I don't really have a lot of blue. So let's put another blue like right there. Okay. So there we go. That's it, you guys. So that's it for the tree. It's all done. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finish decorating the rest of these up real quick. And then... I will be back to show you guys the snowman. It's a little bit more elaborate, so I'll be right back. Hey guys, so for the snowman, what you're gonna do now is, um, it does take a little bit more. So it originally wants you to do a fondant scarf in green. So you would take some fondant, um, cut a little piece off, um, make a diet green, make a little strip that goes here, and then a couple little strips that come down like it's tied off. I do not like working with fondant at all. So I am actually gonna improvise a little bit um, and do it my own way. But the first thing that you're going to do here is basically put some little blue dot or white dots in your blue things because you know it's supposed to be like snow. 
Okay, so we're just gonna put some blue dots on here, or white, I keep saying blue, white dots on here, just randomly about. So it's snowing. Okay. Oops. And then, hold on, we're almost done here. All these white dots on here. Dots are pretty easy. Kind of just squeeze it right onto it and then pull off real fast and stop squeezing. Pretty quick and easy. Okay, so there's, I think I want a little bit more on this one. Okay, so you got your white dots. Now what I'm gonna do is use black because I'm out of green. Now normally I would have just used the green frosting because that's originally what it wanted it to be. So I'm just gonna create a little scarf. Oops, helps if I can do it right there. So like I said, usually it would be in green, but we don't have the green right now. So we'll just give him a little scarf. Give him a little scarf here. Do his little knot here. And then have it hanging down. Okay. There you go. Okay. And then you're also going to use now, unfortunately, this one, the black from the hat is overrunning, but you're going to do two little dots for his eyeballs. Okay. Now, the other thing that you were supposed to do um, is take some blue, some orange, and some pink jelly beans, cut them in half, and you're going to put a, a blue down here, a pink up here, maybe. And then an orange, I'll just put an orange in the middle. Okay, so you get your three dots. Okay, if your icing's too dry, you can use icing. Mine's still a little bit wet, so that's okay. And then it also said to take your white fondant and to dye a little bit orange, and then to use that orange to make a little carrot-shaped nose. Like I said, I don't like using fondant, so I am just gonna make a nice one out of a jelly bean. So that makes his nice little face there can't see his eyeball really well because it's messed up by the hat but that's okay so you got your little tiny snowman okay isn't that cute i think it looks adorable okay you guys so now these need to dry overnight um once they are dry you can go ahead and get some cellophane bags like this and you can just put them in the cellophane bags with the pieces now mine came with little uh zip ties or uh, bread ties whatever they call those um, I would use that and then to get it really tight and closed and then take a thin piece of ribbon of whatever color you want and tie it around it to make it real cute and decorative okay and then when you're done with that um, you can go ahead and give these as gifts to whoever you want now it does say here I'll bring you guys up a little bit so you can see me as well here we go Okay, so it does say that this gingerbread will last for three months if it's not sealed up. If it is in a cellophane bag or in an airtight container, it will last for up to six months. It'll be fresh up for, to three months or six months. So that's really cool. Okay, you guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Like and subscribe if you like or don't if you don't. Everyone have a good day. Enjoy your cooking. Keep your kitchen messy because this one does that. And we'll see you later. Bye.